so now we know that we have this new principle, new dimension with which to work. We know that we have real one of this week's class to instruct ourselves in every principle or major principle and to be able to have the answer for those who come to us. And we know that we have the June through October letters containing the healing principles, healing principles which will cover any phase of the human dream. For our inspiration and for the development of that inner quiet, we have the art of meditation, living the infinite way and practicing the presence and all the rest for whatever good they may serve. Now that leaves us with the responsibility of working with these tools, with these instruments, to whatever degree we wish, to seek whatever degree of attainment we wish. And so I come to this next point. Life is so completely individual that for a moment, for this moment at any rate, we can forget that there is anybody else in the world but ourselves. We can forget any obligation, any duty to anyone else in this moment. We can even forget our past, whether it's a good one or a bad one or an indifferent one. And we can agree, even if we can't fully accomplish it, we can agree to forget the future in the realization that we are making our future. It is by what we do today that our tomorrow is determined. We know that as we sow, so shall we reap, and that if we today are sowing to the spiritual awareness of life, we are going to reap life everlasting, harmony, peace, health, wholeness, wholeness, completeness. We also know that if we are sowing just to the idea of physical comfort, health, wealth, place, position, that we must reap some carnal good and some carnal evil, some material good and some material evil, so that our main concern at this moment is with this moment, and it has nothing to do with anyone else. In this moment there is no one can help our progress but ourselves. We are determining to what extent we are even listening to this message. We can determine whether we are absorbing it or whether we're letting it go in one ear and out the other. <coughs> we can determine how much more serious we will take this message in the next hour than we took it in the last. And by our determination of this moment, we surely know what's coming up in the days to come. Now 
Don't suppress that cough. Let it come. Cough all you like. And give it its own way. But never try to suppress anything. You're just claiming it has power. Cough your head off and prove it hasn't. Not even power to disturb us, because our mind is on what we are doing, and what we are doing is living in this moment. Now, no one can impede your spiritual progress. That's a big statement. But we have to prove that in this moment. There isn't anybody at this moment that knows what's going on in your mind. And if you are devoting yourself to an inner spiritual practice, no one can interfere with that because no one knows that it's going on. You're praying in secret. But you can carry that right out of here into your home. It makes no difference if you have violent objection to this way of life in your home or in your business or in your school. Nobody has to know anything about it because you're living in an interior world, an interior universe. So far as your spiritual practice is concerned, no one in this world has to know that you even know the meaning of it. Inside, I and my Father are one. Inside, I can live a secret life. Nobody is so close to me that they know what is going on inside my mind. I can't even tell whether you are attentive, attentively listening and practicing even while I speak or while you, or if you're out there dreaming. This is a secret life that we are living, the spiritual life, and it doesn't help us to violate that secrecy by telling others about it, more especially others who in the normal way have no interest in it. Now. Think of this minute, and think of us being here, and just see what an advantage you have where two or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of you. Now just think, you are sitting here in the midst of a hundred people who so value this work who so highly regard its spiritual nature that they are giving of their time, their effort, their money in large amounts to be sitting here together where you are. You have the benefit of such consecrated, inspired companionship that only under just such special conditions can you again equal it. Just think what opportunity there is here in this moment for leaving your family outside, your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, of leaving all to enter the Christ Spirit. The Christ Spirit is here. It is right here where you are, where I am, where two or more, where a hundred are gathered in this degree of devotion, consecration, dedication to the one purpose of knowing God, you must know that the very Christ is in the midst of us. Now, I'm going to localize it for you. It is not out in the center of the room, so you don't have to contact it there. It is not up here on this platform. 
so you do not have to mentally reach out up here. This presence of the Christ is closer to you than breathing. It's right in the midst of your own being. It is filling your own consciousness. You don't have to reach out for it. You don't even have to think. All you have to do is be still and let it talk to you from within your own being. The kingdom of God is within you. More especially is the kingdom of God consciously alive in you when you sit in the midst of a hundred dedicated, consecrated souls, all of whom are here but for one purpose, the realization of that presence which is already in the midst of them. Now, here, in this moment, realize this. Within you is the entire spiritual universe. The whole of the Godhead bodily is within you. We are not sitting here dividing it between a hundred of us. It is multiplying itself in the individual experience of each one of us. The Spirit of God is nigh unto you, even within your own being. You need not worship in a holy mountain, nor in Jerusalem, but within you in spirit and in truth. Now I repeat this to you, within yourself, within your own being is the kingdom of God, which means the kingdom of love. And if it is love that seems to be lacking in your experience, do not look outside of your own being for it, for even if you seem to find it, you'll be disappointed. But go within in this very moment, and then remember that when you go home tonight, that is an extension of this moment, and next week is an extension of tonight. And next year is an extension of now. So that all you have to do, whether it is this instant or tonight or next week or next year, is to turn to this great spiritual realm which is within you. And there divine love has its abode, the whole kingdom of God. To find love, go within yourself. Rest there. Acknowledge its presence. Pray that it reveal itself to you. Invite it to flow out from you. And then give action, expression. Immediately begin to let that love pour out from you to your friends and to your enemies to your nation's friends and to your nation's enemies, to men of good will and men of evil will. Be sure that you open your heart and say, Love, flow out. Flow out to the saints to support them in their activities. Flow out to the sinners to cleanse them and purify them. Flow out to the tyrants that it soften them and give them mercy and justice. If you seem to lack wisdom, turn within. Remember that the nature of God is infinite intelligence, and infinite intelligence is in the kingdom of God within you. If you need wisdom, pray that the wisdom already locked up within your being flow out. 
that the wisdom already locked up within you as a grace of God, as the gift of God, be made manifest to you in proportion to your need of it. Seek wisdom, but seek it within yourself. Pray for it. If, if your need at this moment is guidance, turn within. Don't seek guidance of man whose breath is in his nostril. Turn to the one place where infinite, intelligent, loving guidance awaits you, the kingdom of God. Never doubt that the kingdom of God is made up of a divine guidance and that it's established within your own being. Freedom, it makes no difference whether it's a government that would shackle, whether it's a church that would shackle, whether it is sick bodies that would shackle, disease that would shackle, sin that would shackle, fear that would shackle, turn within and you will find that freedom is a quality of God. And every quality of God is already locked up within you. And do not ask or seek your freedom in the external. Seek your freedom from within. If you achieve the demonstration of freedom from within, you will experience it in the without. Be sure that when you invite freedom to come forth, that you instantly give freedom to anyone you are holding in bondage. Even if you're holding them in the bondage to the belief that they're a human being, give them their freedom and say, Father, forgive me. I did not know what I was doing. Nobody is a human being. God sits in the midst of every individual past, present, and future, so-called living or so-called dead, and so-called unborn. Give everyone their freedom, and you will have freedom, for you have only that which you give. You can't have love unless you first give love. You can't have freedom unless you first give freedom. You can't have wisdom unless you first give wisdom. You only have what you give. What you hold on to, you lose. That's a spiritual law. Love, wisdom, freedom. Supply, you can never get supply. It really makes no difference, spiritually or any other way, you cannot get supply. Supply is embodied in the midst of you. Supply is an activity of God. Supply is uh, the gift of God. Supply is that which God embodies, embraces. And God is in the midst of you. Son, thou art ever with me. All that I have is thine. Therefore, an infinity of supply lies within you. But the moment you let your vision stray outside to the husband or wife who may be the channel or the position that may seem to be the avenue, or the business, or the securities, you may be lost. For everyone on earth has found some time or other that every outside avenue collapses. There's only one thing on which you can count, and that is on supply. Supply will never leave you nor forsake you. You can never go any place where supply is not. You carry your supply with you just as you carry your integrity, your loyalty, your fidelity. You cannot leave it behind because it is spiritual. Actually, supply is your awareness of God 
in the midst of you. Prove it. Begin at once to give it. Share it. Express it. It makes no difference whether you think of supply in the terms of supply of love or supply of home, supply of companionship, supply of opportunity, supply of money, supply of recognition, supply of reward, supply of comp compensation. No matter what form you're thinking of, it is within you and it must flow out from you. And you have to live it. You have to start, if necessary, with a penny and give it away to some impersonal purpose. If necessary, you have to give forgiveness. You have to sit down and search your thought and see what there is on the face of the globe that you're holding in condemnation, criticism, or judgment, and forgive, forgive, forgive. Whatever it is must flow out from you. God is infinite being, but God is the infinity of your individual being. Demonstrate it. Prove it. Begin in whatever way is open to you at this second to let God's grace flow out from you. Don't pray that God's grace come to you. Open out a way and let God's grace flow from you. There is a presence within you that goes before you to make the crooked places straight. Your realization of it releases it. There is a cement within you that cements your relationship with anybody and everybody on the face of the globe. Your realization of that releases it. This world is governed from within. Please hear me. This world, this outer world, is governed from within. No flower blossoms on a bush except by virtue of an invisible activity. <coughs> there is an invisible activity that draws from the earth into the root. There's another invisible activity that sends that which is drawn in up into the branches, out into the shoots, that finally becomes the blossoms and the fruit. There is an interior bond between you and God which makes it possible for God to send you where you will find the truth that you need, where God can send you to the employment that you need, to whatever human relationship you need. The power is within you, and it is an invisible power. What you behold in this world consists of effects. But there isn't anything that you behold that isn't the effect of an inner activity. You release this inner activity which goes out into the world invisibly and then makes fruitage visibly. If you abide in me and let my word abide in you, that's all an invisible procedure. You can't live in God externally. 
You can't live in the Word externally, and you can't let the Word live in you externally. You must live in the Christ internally, and you must let the Christ Word abide in you internally, and you will bear fruit richly externally. This is an invisible world. The world, the universe, is invisible. The effects of the universe become visible. The fruitage of the universe becomes visible. The harmonies of the universe become visible. But the cause, the law, the creator, the activity, the substance, these are all invisible. They are parts of an invisible universe, and thank God that invisible universe is locked up within you. You don't have to go to holy temples. You don't have to go to holy mountains. You don't have to go to holy teachers. The kingdom, the invisible kingdom, which is the source of the external universe, is within you. You release the forces that bless you. In your ignorance, you release the forces that curse you. But the kingdom of God, the heavens, the whole of God's creation is within you. This is an invisible world. Human beings only live on the exterior part of life. And that is why they find no satisfaction. In childhood, they have toys, and they get a momentary pleasure out of it, and they smash it. It's no, no longer useful, no longer satisfying. Let's break it. Another toy, and another toy. And then mankind finds a game, and then they find a business, and then they find a church. And everything they find is in the exterior world. They live on the surface of it. They get a little pleasure out of it, a little profit out of it, a little joy out of it, and then they want to break it up. It isn't any good anymore. It doesn't bring satisfaction, and nothing ever will in the exterior. The kingdom of God, of reality, the whole source and fount of this world of God is within us. When we learn to let the invisible flow release itself through us, it appears as fruitage of which we never tire. Oh yes, don't go to the city to buy me meat. I have meat ye know not of. You see, when you learn of this invisible world, this kingdom of God, which is so beautiful, so satisfying, so complete, the invisibility appears as your outer fruitage. It appears as your food, clothing, home, human relationships marriage, whatever it is, and then it is satisfying. Then you never weary of it. You never tire of it. It is always joyous, and you pass from glory to glory because you no longer hold on to form, but you find joy in this city or that city. You find companionship in this person or that person. You find truth in this religion or that religion. You find a peace in this church or that church. Why? Because you didn't seek it in the external form, but you released it from within your own being, and then it appeared outwardly as an infinite, eternal, joyous, satisfying form. This world within you is called a mystical world. And the life that flows from it is called a monastic life. Now, people have misunderstood those two terms. 
and they thought of the mystic as something mysterious. The mystical was something mysterious and often even evil. The monastic life has been thought of as going away to a monastery or a convent and bottling oneself up away from society and thereby avoiding sin and labor. Isn't it foolish? Some of our hardest workers are in monasteries and convents. And I can tell you this, that if they haven't lost the sense of sin, they've carried their sin right into the monastery and into the convent. You can't bottle yourself up anywhere where you won't find lonesomeness, sinfulness, lack, limitation. The mystical life is the life I'm describing to you. The life that you live when you recognize that the invisible spiritual presence and power within you is the reality and that it forms the joys of your outer experience. That's the mystical life. When we find the source and substance of our joy, our prosperity, our happiness, our wisdom, our love within us, and then automatically find it developing into fruitage in the without. The monastic life is one of the results of that mystical life. The monastic life is the life that you live in the interior where you find your self-completeness in God and where you discover that you do not need anyone or anything because you have found self-completeness in God. And then when you open your eyes, you find yourself with wonderful companions, wonderful associates, wonderful relatives, wonderful business associates, because on the outer plane, the monastic life bears fruitage in harmonies and good, forms of good. You are living the monastic life when you're in your business, if you're surrounded by a thousand people, because you are living as I and the Father are one within. You are living the monastic life when you're married. If you have found your self-completeness within and then share it with your companion without. You are not living the monastic life if you're married and dependent on parents, wife, husband, children and can't find your peace without them, you have not found monastic life. You haven't found monastic life if you have to be out in the business world with all your dependencies on person, influence, power, money. The monastic life is the life that we are leading this minute. A self-completeness within ourselves. In this very moment with a hundred of us together we are leading the monastic life because we do not need each other. We have found our self-completeness right here within ourselves and yet what we've discovered within we're sharing with each other. That is the true monastic life. You don't have to be separate and apart from your family. You don't have to be separate and apart from your business. You don't have to be separate and apart from this world. You can be in political office and lead the monastic life if you have an inner integrity and bring to your political life the integrity of your inner life. Let us understand this. The greatest place in the world is within you. That's the most wonderful place to be, within you. For there you can tabernacle with God, with Christ, the Spirit of God in you. And be not surprised if you meet 
in that temple within yourself the saints and the sages of all time. For the saints and sages of all time are only spiritual consciousness at different levels. And you must expect to meet spiritual consciousness within yourself at many levels. Don't be surprised when you find your contact with God within if you also find yourself in the external realm making contact with the right companionships, right business associates, right family associates. For we establish our outer life when we are within. And by what takes place within do we establish the degree and the intensity, the quality and the quantity of the without. The kingdom of God is within me. Whatever I seek, I must seek in the kingdom of God within me, then release it in action and wait patiently until the fruitage appears in our experience. Living in the interior world gives us a perfect balance in life. Living an interior life balances every event in our outer life. If we live wholly on the outer plane, everything with which we come in contact becomes ultimately just a toy that either breaks of its own weakness or that we break ourselves because it's lost our interest. If, however, we live part of our time in this interior world, tabernacling in the kingdom of God, communing with these inner presences, inner powers, inner joys, we will then find that that inner substance that we have released will appear outwardly as a successful day, a protected day, a day in which we can bless those with whom we associate. Do you know this, that you of your own self can't bless anybody? Do you know that I of my own self can bless nobody? and that I'm probably more aware of it than you are? Do you know that I know that I have no value for you and that there's only one reason that you are here and that is for the experience of whatever measure of the spirit I have contacted within. Take that away from me and you wouldn't bother to come here. You wouldn't even bother to come here from downtown much more from far distances. For I myself have nothing for you. But I draw on the kingdom of God within me and it has a way of satisfying you. It becomes meat to you and drink and opportunity and supply and home and happiness and joy. The very moment, ah, 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 he says, he says, about springs, springs, springs of water that come up into, bubble up into life eternal, well springs of water within me. Yes, you do not have to draw water with a bucket. I can give you water. How does the master get water for you? By living an interior life, by realizing that the substance of all form is within and then going in and being with it, praying with it, living with it, and releasing it. I have meat the world knows not of. He wasn't saying that of himself. He was teaching a principle of life to you and to me. We have meat that the world knows not of, but we must go within to find it and share it 
experience it, release it. I am the bread of life. Why struggle so hard for bread? Why fight for it? Sometimes lie, cheat, and deceive for it. Why? Why? It's all within you. You need not fight. All good is within you. Ah, yes. But if you don't go there, if you don't learn to spend a little time there, if you can't find a peace in there, a joy in there, it won't appear outwardly. And so you'll walk through this world and you'll have nothing to give anyone. If you have a lot of money and give it, they'll hate you for it. If you forgive them for what they've done and tell them so, they'll hate you for the fact that they wronged you. You have nothing to give humanly. No one has. Not even Jesus Christ. But I and the Father are one. And I spend time with my Father within. I love to think of God's grace within me. I love to think that that grace can flow out and I can share abundantly with all who are in my experience. I love to know that God's grace is equal to any demand made upon it. Not any demand for me or by me, but from those who call upon me. No demand upon me can be too big, for I have a divine grace to go to and draw from. The kingdom of God is within you. The interior world is the world of reality. The interior world, the world within you, is the world of reality. Externally, you find only forms. But oh, there's such hollow forms if you don't first go within to make contact. I shall never leave you nor forsake you. What good is that to you if you don't go in and meet I? I is there in the midst of you. I is mighty in the midst of you. What good is that if you won't go in and get acquainted? Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. You must have periods, day and night, when you go within to meet God. First few times you may not meet him. You will eventually. Don't forget he's been hidden back there for centuries. Centuries in which you've been walking up and down the world, living on the edge of the world, living on the outside of the world, living on the externals. There's probably a big crust of self between you and I that is within you. Be patient. Knock and it will be opened unto you. Ask. It will be given to you. But go within and knock. Go within and ask. Father, reveal thyself. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Learn to go within and realize that locked up deep inside of you is the whole kingdom of reality, the kingdom of God. The whole of the Christ is embodied within you. It isn't, it's not walking the streets of Jerusalem. Although I will say this to you, that if you walk the streets of Jerusalem with sufficient humility, you'll feel it there. You can walk the streets of Damascus and feel Paul walking right beside you. In that great big rush of mass humanity that today walks the street called straight where Paul walked, you can actually feel God, Paul's presence on those streets, for the spirit of Paul has never left there. So with you. 
the Spirit of God is within you, the Christ is within you, how are you going to meet it if you play around on the surface of the world with toys and baubles? Meet the Father within. Please remember the message of the Infinite Way is wholly and completely founded on the revelation of the Master Christ Jesus. Not because of any superstitious belief. I was never a Christian. I'm not a Christian. I was never a Jew nor an Oriental. I can't be. Because I know that the Christ is the Spirit of God. It was the intelligence and the love of Lao Tzu, a Chinese. It was all that went to make up Gautama the Buddha. It was the life and heart and soul of Jesus Christ, of Moses, of Isaiah, of Elijah, of Shankara, and many others. But the message of Jesus Christ has given it to us in words so plainly that you can't miss it. You can't miss it if you once catch the glimpse that he's revealing to you a kingdom, an interior kingdom, an interior world that's as more real, more real than the exterior one because you could collapse the exterior one. Never doubt this. If they ever release a bomb that destroys this world, there'll be just as much of the world here as there was before. Let me prove it to you. A few thousand years ago, when there were only a few million people on earth, was there less of God than there is now with four billion? Will there be more of God next year? when there's another 150 million on earth? Isn't God here in its completeness and its perfection even when there isn't uh, but one? Isn't the allness and the fullness of God represented in every one? You are that one. The fullness of the Godhead bodily is expressed as you. If you were the only person left on the face of the earth, you could live the monastic life complete, perfect, harmonious. If there were a billion around you, not understanding and not believing, you still could lead the monastic life, the full and complete life in God, because you can always close your eyes at night in the washroom in the park, turn within and realize, just think, within me is the secret of the universe. Within me is the whole secret of the, the Holy Grail is within me. The Word of God is within me. The Hebrew Torah is within me. The Ten Commandments, the Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads, Vedas, the Hebrew Testament, the Christian Testament, the Persian mystics, all of this is within me. I can open myself and let it flow right out. The kingdom of God is within me. I can go within and tabernacle with God, with the Christ, with saints and sages. And I can come out into the exterior and their spirit will flow out through me to be the bread and the wine and the meat and the water of those who conduct me in my family life, my business life, my social, my political life. They won't know the source. They don't have to. That's my secret. It's a secret that I only share with those who are on this path. I meet thousands of people in my travels. And to them, I'm just a man in a business suit of clothes, and we talk over all the problems of the world, and they know nothing, they know nothing of the fact that locked up in me is the secret of life. Locked up in me is the kingdom of God. 
Locked up in me is the healing grace of Christ. Locked up in me is the power to multiply loaves and fishes. Locked up in me is the joy and peace of a universe. Locked up in me is the power to attract to the Word of God all those who are seeking God. And just think, there's no truth about me that isn't a truth about you. To some extent, all of you have demonstrated this. Not enough. To some extent, I've demonstrated it too, and not enough. For I know, as you now know, there is an interior world, a real world. It's the source of the outer world. It is the creative principle, the maintaining and the sustaining principle of the outer world. You must learn to tabernacle with it, commune with God at the center of your being. Meet there every day. And you see now that you know all these people, you can meet us there. Go right within yourself and meet us there. Realize that we too are meeting within you, within each other. I and you and you and me and all of us and God. Just realize that you can never be alone. Wherever you close your eyes and look within, I am with you. And all of these people in this room are with you. They are as much a part of your consciousness as your own family, if only you close your eyes and look for them there. Every word of truth that God has ever uttered is locked up within you. Loose it and let it go. Never tell this except to those of your own household. Don't expose your pearls to those who are not connoisseurs of pearls. Don't show your great paintings and your great artworks except to those who have an appreciation of it. Don't ever let anyone ridicule your inner life. Don't let them try even to destroy your faith, your understanding, your wisdom. You have a pearl the world would sell its soul to find if it only knew what it would do for them. This is the mystical life. This is the monastic life. I am the Father of One, and in God I find my self-completeness. And when I open my eyes and go out in the world, I share the glories of God, the grace of God, the peace of God that passeth understanding. I have myself for nothing, but I can go within. I can go within and enjoy God's grace. No man can take your riches from you. No man can take your peace. The world cannot get inside because it knows nothing of an interior world. It doesn't know you have one. If the world ever strikes at you, it will merely be to take your money or your property or your business. It doesn't know that those are your toys or that those are the fruits that grow on your tree. And so that's all it'll ever take from you. And you'll smile because you know the minute they've taken it, this process of spiritual multiplication has already begun and in due time there'll be more fruitage on your trees. No man can take your peace from you after you have discovered the interior world. After you have discovered that within you is the substance of all form, the law of all effect, the divine grace. Never again can the world disturb you. Never, never, never. 
can it touch you? The heart and the soul of the infinite way is its mysticism and monasticism. It has nothing to do with leaving the world on the outer plane. It has all to do with leaving the world while you go within and eat of that inner meat and drink of that inner water. Tabernacle with the inner saints and sages, the Christ. And then come on out and enjoy every person and everything that God's grace hangs on your Christmas tree. Thank you.